how did you feel when you first watched the dailies? Like when you first sat down in the editing room with the editor, like and got down to business, like. Were you there, by the way, like a lot of the time when he was editing, or did you let him put it together? And... I let him put it together because I was busy. Okay. I was very busy. If I hadn't been working as an actress, I would have probably been there much more often. Mm -hmm. But um, I let him put it all together and make an assembly, and then so that like a week and a half after I was finished shooting, I sat down and I watched an assembly of the mm -hmm. film, uh, which was just his random, mm -hmm. you know, him just picking things randomly and putting them together so that it was the film as the script is written. Uh -huh. um, and he said, do you want to start from the assembly or do you want to start from scratch? Uh -huh. And I was like, I need to start from scratch. Because okay. I hadn't seen all of the dailies yeah. at all. Um, I was, he was giving me dailies and I was watching them at night. Uh -huh. But I hadn't seen them all. There were chunks of the film that I hadn't even seen mm -hmm. at that point. So. It wasn't, I mean, apart from like what I had thought it was based mm -hmm. on like what I thought we were making mm -hmm. on the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like really excited to start from scratch, watch it all with him and put it together in that way. Because working from his assembly wasn't going to work for me for some reason. And I think mm -hmm. it was because... You're just assuming a take is the one that you should use. I mean, you're yeah. assuming so many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanted to be meticulous mm -hmm. with the editing process. Mm -hmm. um, so I was. So it took us a long time. Yeah. But it was worth it. <laughs> did you find, did you, did any scenes that weren't written in the script in a certain order, did you flip any of them in? Oh yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Like, we, like, I made the directors cut, we made the front, like, mm -hmm. director one, mm -hmm. and then based on notes from Cora and Jen and Jason and the editor, uh -huh. we would, we would all watch, you know, we would watch it and then we would all talk about it. Yeah. And Chris was so great to work with because he was really uh, enabling of me. Like he just wanted everything that I wanted most uh -huh. of the time because we both kind of were on the same page. Um, but he was so practical that he was able to give me stuff that I wouldn't have been able to envision because I'm not an editor. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like so fun to sit mm -hmm. in there and work with him. And I was sick at one point which was really funny because I was like blowing into this like box of tissues and uh -huh. I had a bin next to me that I would just like put the tissues in uh -huh. and I was like drinking tea and like telling him what to yeah. do and he was so nice <laughs> he like dealt with me yeah. um, but you know we had a lot of fun as well in the sense that we I mean the whole thing was really really fun he drinks a lot of tonic water and he would freeze the tonic, tonic water Ooh. yeah it was so intense so like you get <laughs> we got into this like crazy place because you're cutting for yeah. like so long yeah, that we were like drinking frozen tonic water slushies as our break and wow. we were like this is so great oh. <laughs> um thank god i didn't smoke at that point because i would just smoke cigarettes oh like, yeah for sure constantly uh so so you flip certain scenes around yes yes and um, what, what was the choice on that and it worked continuity wise well yeah it did it it was like the the third the third part of the film uh -huh. needed to be different than it was. It needed okay. to have a drive that it didn't okay. necessarily have in the order that it had been written in. Mm -hmm. So taking those scenes in the third part of the movie and moving them around kind of gave us this really sharp arc okay. and that in combination with um, the notes from Peter Mullen, like it was too long, uh -huh. um, kind of made me realize that it had to be an entertaining film. Uh -huh. um, and that, you know, the script was really entertaining, but it wasn't necessarily, like, what the film became in the sense uh -huh. that the film was really tight. Okay. So there were lots of things that I just, like, took away. Like, mm -hmm. I would just be like, oh, don't need those two lines. Mm -hmm. Don't need these two lines. But, like, um, that wasn't something that I, I would have ever been able to do before that moment. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. I couldn't have done that when yeah. I just had the script, because it totally. was, you know... You, it's like someone said that you write one film, you direct another film, you cut a different film, and then people see a fourth. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically true. That's like, true. It's crazy. Yeah, it's so true. Wow. Um, I've asked you about this before, and I really liked what you had to say about it, so now I'm, I'm asking it now you're so asking that I can on camera. So that she can share. <laughs> um, this is so much fun. <laughs> um, I've asked you a lot about tone. Because as I was yeah. preparing for my film, I was getting really hung up on 
this idea of tone. And you had some interesting things to say about that as just a concept. Um, do you do you have thoughts on it still? What did I say about tone? <laughs> do you remember you, what I said? Well, you suggested that that was almost like a not a myth, but like the this idea of 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 tone was almost something that didn't exist until it existed, until mm -hmm. the movie existed. Mm -hmm. So you know, sitting there and like wondering about it was, you know... Or trying to manufacture it. I suppose so. Yeah. I just thought it was an interesting way that you put well, that. I think that when you have so many people working on something, mm -hmm. then you want, you do really want to be able to say that you don't know in a given moment. Not that you don't know, but that like, you never know. Yeah. Like I think I think that's what keeps it interesting. I think mm -hmm. if I, I think what's gonna happen with like the next films that we all do uh -huh. is that they kind of speak to you in a funny way more than you can speak to them. Mm -hmm. Like you do, of course you plan it and you yeah. do your work and you've written the script yeah. and you've done the shot list and you have the colors, you have the vision, like you know what it is. Yeah. And you go through that. And it's not that that changes or mm -hmm. that that's not what it is, mm -hmm. but I think it speaks so much to you while you're going through the process that you want to like absorb those things mm -hmm. and then I think the mixture of those things and your to and your vision yeah then is the tone yeah you know yeah and I think like I, I think that that's a good way to to work because it's more open maybe than like figuring it out right now and holding to that. Mm -hmm. Not that that's mm -hmm. what you would have done at no, all. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's what you would have done. No. But like, I think when you asked me about tone, I was like, yeah, what is the tone of good day? <laughs> and I was like, the tone of it is so, like it's so specific, that film yeah. is so specific. It is, I think, and I think that any really, really original film is, the tone is so specific that it is very difficult to say, well, it's this or that, or especially before it's made, it's this or that, because yeah. it might be something you can't really quite say with words, because if you could say it with words, then why make a movie? Sure, but I tell you what, like, I Am I is such a, the script is such, has such a spine, and it's such a specific, original piece, that it's, it's almost like, because that's the case, everything around it is just gonna, like, <laughs> enable it, and, yeah. like, make that happen, and that's never, like, that, that through line will never change. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, it's not that you don't necessarily know what tone is before you start mm -hmm. making a film. I think it's that like it's just innate. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. there. So mm -hmm. like you just listen to you it. You just listen to that. And yeah. you're doing that. Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah. And like then you and then maybe you you are surprised by some things mm -hmm. or you know or you realize that some things in that in a certain moment are not the tone. Mm -hmm. So you take that away. Mm -hmm. But that the kind of I think it's kind of like you can't go wrong because what's innate about your story is innate about it and mm -hmm. that's what comes through and that's what everyone's doing yeah. and then that's just what it is yeah. and it's kind of like magic. Yeah. But it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard for me to talk about tone, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's hard for me to talk about it too. Because it's so like, that, where that's is why it? I, yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's like this intangible... <laughs> Thing. Yeah. But but I do agree with, with what you were saying that it's innate in yeah in the project. I yeah. think it's so like it can't help itself. You get the people yeah. yeah, you get the people you trust and believe in giving their interpretation too and that should all come together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like if you look at the tone of like Mean Streets, uh -huh. like that film has tone and it had tone at the time. Uh -huh. It had, like, that was like, wow, mm -hmm. that's saying something, that mm -hmm. film. Um, so, I think that that's so great, but, like, could Scorsese have been, like, this is what the tone is going to be? Like, he was doing one, th he had a certain intention, and he thought it was one thing, mm -hmm. and it grew into this other entity, yeah. and got on its feet, and it becomes, like, this different thing that is kind of the same colour as what mm -hmm. you originally thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm but it's maybe bigger or just different or whatever. Yeah. It's so, yeah, it's such an interesting thing.